Mario Kart Wii turns 15 years old next month. There are still new strategies, glitches, and impressive feats being accomplished in the time trial scene today. What do the world records look like now? We're going to go through the world records of every single category of each track in the game. Enjoy. Starting things off on Luigi Circuit, of course Cole still has the world record. However, January 7th of this current year. Casey finally pulls through and he ties Cole's time. Yes, um, Cole technically still has a world record, but Casey now does as well. And it's very exciting. Um, as you may have seen the past couple of years of me doing this, I tend to react to the current world records as of January 1st of that new year. However, the past two months in particular of 2023 has been really interesting. A lot has happened. So I actually included the first two months of this year as well, because I thought, why not? A lot of cool storylines are going on. And I think this year, this will finally be untied. I don't think anyone had in their predictions uh, a tie on LC, but here we are where both Casey and Cole are the concurrent holders of LC. And uh, yeah, I definitely think that Casey will untie this in the coming year. I even think on his channel, he uploaded like almost what would have been like a 22950 opener possibly. Like he was near like off screening Cole's um, prior best on split, I think, uh, into the shortcut. So crazy stuff. Um, that was Cole's run and now we have Casey's run. So I wanted to showcase both of them. I could have just done like the versus uh, each other, but they both technically hold the world record right now. So give them both the proper screen time, right? And um, yeah, like as you guys are gonna see, you're gonna see Casey's name quite a bit now uh, later on in the video. Um, Casey has just fully blossomed now as a player. I think after getting through his hurdle of getting his first world record, which was on uh, Peach Beach, I believe, um, the flunky is kind of open for him. And uh, he got a couple more the past year. So uh, Casey is uh, putting in some work out here, so to say. But um, yeah, uh, I think this track, as mentioned, I think Casey will go for the untie this year. I don't think anyone else is near the skill level that's recently active trying at this point. So I could definitely see Casey getting like a lower 0.7. I think a 0.6 will happen humanly, but it might take a little bit of time. Who knows? But um, yeah, this very exciting all around to see uh, Cole's legacy. It goes on, but now it is tied. So the ties in this game are always super cool. Um, there's been a lot of cool ties in the almost uh, 15 years of this game being out at this point come next month. And uh, as it was last year, I include all the current worldwide top 10s after each track and category, you're welcome. And uh, you can see how the scene is changing year by year now. So this requires a lot of effort. It takes a lot of time to make the videos like this of this quality. So if you enjoy it, please give me a thumbs up. Would be appreciated. Thank you. Moomin Meadows, one of my favorite tracks. This did have the business going on last year. And uh, speaking of Casey, he did randomly get this world record beating Sosis. Um, if I remember, I don't think I predicted this record going down last year. I don't think so. Um, but he got really high on tops with the Spear of all vehicles. And uh, he randomly got the world record with the Flame Runner. However, Sosis came back and he got a monster run, which is this run. It's a 115 point mid three, if my memory serves me right. And uh, Sosis always comes back and just shows that he has so much more to do on all of his tracks that he has. Um, this is definitely a really good run for this track, but he can certainly do a lot more. I think he could probably do at least like a mid to low point two here without any significant changes. I think this will definitely get a good treatment in 2023 as well. Um, Sosis, Casey, um, honestly, if ZQ finally gets some good luck on a run, I don't see why he couldn't do it too. He's been recently active in the past year. Um, and funnily enough, last year, this is the first track ever, check this out, where the entire American regional top 10 
a regional of any country um, area at all where the regional top 10 was exactly the worldwide top 10. I don't think in 15 years that's ever happened at all. So that was truly crazy to see that in the past year. Moving on now to Mushroom Gorge. And Mushroom Gorge also has some pretty significant changes here. If I'm remembering, I don't think I anticipated this track being beaten uh, during this year. Um, but there is some new strategies being used. Wait a little bit longer and we'll watch together. We have this strategy being used in runs now three for three. And I believe that's been like a task exclusive strategy for a couple of years. Uh, at the very least, I think the prior task runs, they used the spear for no glitch and they would do that whole maneuver there in the middle of the lap. And I think it was Fatality was the first one that was dabbling with the strategy and had a pretty good improvement. Um, I believe now Fatality goes by Eclipse, I think, on the tops, if I correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but yeah, uh, a lot of activity happened here. I mean, the first one to dethrone uh, Connor was Alperin, and uh, he finally got some uh, good progress here on this track. And then uh, Logan picked up the strat and uh, got a really really good run being this run here right now um you know apart from this strategy being used now i don't know if there's any other unused past strategies that are not used in rta now i'm not all that sure honestly um all we're doing this strat now we're doing the mushroom skip we're doing the hopless scores we're doing the spin drift cut at the end of lap three I don't know if there's much more to really do. Well, no, okay, I lied. There is um, skipping the boost panel by the first mushroom of each lap. Um, I think that does save a decent chunk of time, but I think that's, that might be even more precise than what you're doing with the new strategy now at the middle of the lap. Regardless though, that is a wicked time with where the record stands right now. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if this stands for the entire year, but also if Alprin and others were to try to adopt the strategy and see where things go from here. So, moving on now to the glitch category. This finally has the sub 20 second time. That's right. And it is by none other than Idris. Idris reclaimed this world record after so long. I think it was probably at least two or three years where Bryce had his uh, reign pretty dominant for a while. And I wasn't even aware that Idris really played the game at all anymore. Um, but he got up by quite a big extent. 19.7? Yeah. A mid-7. Uh, crazy. Crazy stuff. I feel like it's been the elusive uh, time to get for so long now. So um, this category is always crazy. I think the splits give like a low 19 or something like that. Um... I think definitely Bryce and Idris might have a little bit of back and forth here uh, in the coming year. We'll see. To be determined. Now, we go on to Toad's Factory where there is more changes to be had. As you're going to see, all the vast majority of all categories of glitch, shortcut, no glitch, no shortcut were all improved in the past year. Really impressive for the game being almost 15 years old now, honestly. Um, check this out. This has been a task strategy. Really very simple, just one extra hop, but now it's being used in runs. And from what I can really deduce, when you're hopping uh, late uh, before that turn, you are preserving some of the speed from the conveyor belt. I tried slowing down a speedometer mostly on some task runs because I couldn't really see it specifically on these RTA runs, but you preserve the uh, some of the conveyor belt speed on the first hop off it, but I think the second hop, if it's like a first frame hop or something, uh, I've seen the speedometer where it's like 91 kmh or something, so it's just preserving more speed just to save some more time. Very free time save. I feel like the past year has been a lot of further innovation and adopting some otherwise, you know, harder, um, perhaps ex um, perceived task exclusive strategies, you would say. Uh, being translated now to RTA runs and I think that's just the pattern for not only this game But I feel like a lot of other games where things are perceived as way too difficult RTA or really task exclusive um, I mean, Some things are kind of obvious, right? But um, 
Apart from that, it's just showing that, you know, players are really trying to find all the time save, trying to really have no stone unturned at this point. And, um, you know, Connor beat Logan without um, the strategy, and Logan didn't play this for a while from what I saw, but he recently came back, reclaimed the world record. It's a point zero now. I can't believe it. And I, I really did not think a 148 would happen without any, like, real significant huge strategy changes. It may have been Bint that did an RTA strategy task, human theory task. It was like a 148.3, or it might have been Justin that did that one on this track, actually. And, um, yeah, it's just, uh, it's literally all in the shroomless cut and a really good low jump, truthfully. So, will this 148 in the 2023? I think so. That's going to be on my, uh, on my bingo card for this year, at least. So, uh, we shall see what happens here. Now we have the shortcut variation of Toad's Factory. Logan, of course, still has his two. And, uh, you know, we're doing this live here, ladies and gentlemen. So let's kind of consult the MKWRS website. Was this improved in the past year? I think it was, yeah. Logan got this minor improvement in April of last year. It's a 144.3. And as far as I'm aware, almost no one is really actively playing this track. The only improvement I really noticed looking at the MK leaderboards recently was uh, Justin uh, tied someone's uh, time on, on the charts here. And what you're going to see is on the <laughs> the worldwide charts for this track, I think there's two different ties. Uh, of all things on like a shortcut category like this, there's two ties. It's actually pretty cool. So uh, I think ties are really cool just in, you know, Mario Kart time trials in general, you know. But, um... Yeah, just in case you guys don't know, this is still pretty much like a pace locked category for the most part. Uh, you may think, why do the players not do this three for three? It's unfortunately due to uh, the cycle based nature of this shortcut. As you see, you're getting the clip off of the boxes to make that ginormous skip every single lap. You can do it theoretically three for three. Task does do it. But you have to go way too fast um, on the first lap to make the cycle. Um, and you see like, the, the fence is along either side. I tried doing some theorizing. I spoke with the taskers maybe like a year or two ago. And what they told me is that the, um, the fences and everything has like a different wall property where you can't really get a proper clip off of it uh, compared to the boxes. So um, that kind of throws that idea out the window. But um, yeah, just more so optimizing the current two for three. I think 143 will happen. I think there's more time to squeeze out here. Um, seems like Logan comes back every now and again just to have another improvement once in a while. So, um, yeah, I don't see anyone really contesting him in the future for now. Only time will tell, obviously, but um, very impressive still, nonetheless. Now, that concludes Mushroom Cup. We're on to the Flower Cup. And good old Caleb House, Mr. Guy over here, still has Mary Circuit in the current year. And uh, Casey got very close to claiming this one in the past year. Um, he has a 120.4. Uh, Guy has a 120.3 here. And I I think in April, right? Let me look. Actually, I think in April, this will be three years old. Let me see. Uh, yeah. Come April 17th, if it's not beaten, actually, it'll be it'll be two years. It feels like it was a little bit longer. I don't know why, but uh, yeah, crazy stuff. Um, this was the first 3 for 3 King Alex run, basically that uber super low jump there. It's called the King Alex ramp strat. And uh, it took forever for someone to get a 3 for 3 uh, world record run with this. And in case you guys weren't in the know-how on the scene a couple of years ago, um, this improved the world record by pretty much half a second of one giant jump. And um, I think Hasey's run has this ramp strategy, two for three, then he has a fast ramp as the one for three. I think this year this will get an improvement of some sort. I think Hasey will finally get around to trying to claim this uh, after all this time. And I do think Casey will give, uh, um, Guy will give Casey some competition. That's my prediction. Uh, there has been some activity here in the past year. Uh, a couple more players getting some higher 120s, so very impressive all around. Um, but yeah, we'll see. Uh, I'm definitely predicting that this will get an improvement in the coming year. Uh, by who? 
not too sure as of yet, but um, this is still an incredibly impressive roll record regardless. So with that in mind, we have an improvement as well on the glitch side of things on Mario Circuit. Um, so the, this is Japanese player uh, KEI. I don't know if it's, if it's pronounced key or K. I'm just going to say key for now. And I believe this was his first world record. He does get another record on another track later on. And this was a pretty decent size improvement. It may have been 200 milliseconds. Let's, uh, let's take a look here as we're watching alongside here. Yeah, he beat Logan's record by like 140 milliseconds, give or take, uh, plus or minus 10 milliseconds or so. Um, and got that in September. So uh, yeah, I feel like uh, Key has been doing this for a little while now. I've been seeing his improvements on the charts every now and again. So uh, it's always cool to see when uh, a player finally achieves their first world record in the game. It's a very special feeling. So uh, hats off the Key, congratulations. Um, I think there's still more to come on this track. I wouldn't at all be surprised if this is eventually around the 46 second time in the future. Um, but this is a very impressive run as it is right now. Um, I think Logan may come back in the coming year. We'll see. And maybe maybe Dez will come back as well and see if there's some more competition here. We shall see. Regardless, we continue on now to Coconut Mall, where to my absolute surprise, both categories had an improvement in the past year by none other than the coconut mall goat himself breaks it so starting things off on the noblest side of things here uh Brakeson finally broke into the low 155 barrier territory now what you're going to see is on lap two they finally do something different on the car section and it looks really precise and it saves a good chunk of time I think Brakeson may have told me that at his peak, it may save like 70 to 90 milliseconds, I think, on lap two. Um, you know, I've always asked Brakeson once in a while, um, you know, what would it take to do like the lap one car cycle on lap two? Um, but I think even he mentioned to like do that outright, it would, it would be like such a insane pace. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Brakeson, but... That's kind of what I remember uh, him mentioning to me uh, a while ago. But uh, coming up here is going to be uh, some nightmare fuel to a few of you from how close this maneuver is. Let's watch together while I drink some water because I'm speaking a lot right now. Yep. Yeah, so that's that's crazy. Like going for that maneuver, barely skimming by the car. That saves around 70 to 90 milliseconds from what I remember being told. Um, but to have like one single drift on the last boost pad lap two, I think it requires just a, an ungodly pace to do that. Um, and I was wondering, do you eventually get pace locked out of the triple boost pad slot three from how fast they're kind of going now? But again, from what I remember Breaks and telling me is that even like almost at 154, the car still won't really be a problem. So that's, that's cool at least. But um, yeah, I, I definitely think Brakeson wants a lot more than this. Um, but regardless, though, he still has his vice grip on both categories of this track. Very impressive all around. Will this be improved in the coming year? I think so. I think Brakeson will continue to slowly chip away at his own pace here. Uh, a couple of others can definitely contend, but I think Brakeson still has a little bit of a gap here versus the others as far as just being ahead of the curve and just getting things done here. Now, the bigger surprise to me was this. I definitely did not predict this category being improved in the in the past year. And I, I forget how long did it stand for, man? Like, I I don't understand. Like he 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 just improved both categories nonchalantly. Like I I don't even know, man. Yeah. So. His 31481 lasted 1,004 days. He's had no competition for literally years. No one's ever gonna beat this guy, I'm convinced. Um, and he improved it with a 335, and then improved to a 311 three months later. Like, what in the world, man? Bracey, it's too crap, bro. That's what I'm saying, man. It's crazy. Oh my gosh, man. Ay, ay, ay. 
But he, he just lays a smack down once more, just flexing on everyone, you know, just absolutely crazy, absolutely crazy. No one's beating him for the longest time. I will gladly bet money on that. He's just a other world away on this track right now. So um, I think he'll continue to have um, his, his dominance on this category for quite some time in the future. We shall see. This is one of the happiest sights I've ever seen recently. I believe this was January of 2023. Mr. Blake Germany. He finally gets the 144 on the summit. He improves by literally, I think, almost 800 milliseconds or something really crazy. Mr. Blake has been very diligent on the summit. He's one of the true OGs of the scene. He was around when I started in 2008 and, um, it just made me so happy to see him finally break through on this track. He's had so many fails on and off over many years. And um, there are objective still things that can be improved in his run. But at the same time, a lot of things finally go right for him in a run. Thus having such a humongous time save. Um, Connor did play this a little bit last year. He had some minor improvements, but he didn't reclaim the record. And now Blake has essentially almost a full second lead now on a no shortcut track. It's insane. This, this is always one of my favorite tracks to play at a very high level. Um, if you ever watch Blake's streams when he's really cooking and playing very good, it's a, it's a treat to see this played at a very high level. Um, the Madman has said he wants a 143, so we shall see what happens in the future. The splits are certainly there for it, but this is by far one of the absolute hardest tracks to play in the game especially on the no glitch side of things. So very happy for you, Blake. This is absolutely insane. I'm happy you finally got your, your dues paid after being indulgent for so long. He's had some very healthy breaks in the game for a couple of months at a time, but um, he came back. He got the spoils of the war on the summit. Finally, 144, 599. That looks so cool, man. It's absolutely crazy. So congrats, man. I'm very happy for you. Um, Seeing one of the last remaining OGs from my my time still uh, defying the odds, defying uh, Father Time here, as we would say. So look at that, almost a full second lead. Like, will this be improved in the coming year? If he gets good luck, maybe. Uh, apart from that, that's a very hard run to beat. Maybe Connor can do it on a very good run, but it's it's in the whole different territory of being able to beat that now at this point. As we may have known, Wario's Gold Mine had the revolution at the beginning of last year. So many people meme my prediction sometimes, but I did say if there's no strategy changes, Vince's time would have stood for a very long time, which I still stand by that, by the way. However, in the past year, the world record was improved by over half a second and it's now 149. It was 150.58 something let us take a look uh it was 579 by vincent lasted almost a thousand days and uh a lot of new things going on here so the turn skip at the beginning of the run started the whole revolution of sorts and then justin claimed the world record but then he does the dip skip which is at the end of the lap here um if you watch my um, commentary for um, the first quarter of last year for World Records, I detail that entire backstory there. It was very interesting. This track is so much fun to play. It looks literally insane now. Uh, this beginning strat is very hard to do. More notably on lap one for the turboless slip, just because of the angle that you have. It's very, very precise. I think still half the worldwide top 10 don't even do that on lap one from just how hard it is. It's a lot easier doing the double MT for on laps two and three. Luke finally pulled through and he got the first 149 here. I know Vincent had a very big 149 fill uh, last year before it was done too. Um, but yeah, I think this will definitely be improved in the coming year. There are several players that can certainly do a lot of damage here. Luke can improve again. Logan can claim it back. Vincent can claim it back anytime as well. There's a lot of very, very good gold mine players that play this track. So I think this won't stand uh, during this year. I think this will go down at least by a little bit, maybe a mid to low point eight on a very good run. We shall see. But um, this is one of the coolest things that I saw in the past year for sure.
So it's gonna it's a completely irrecognizable time trial now from last year. Now, uh, still a very cool storyline is uh, I believe it was March of uh, last year that uh, Spanish player Pollo came back on the exact day 13 years ago. He was the first person to get a three for three pipe bounce world record. And uh, exactly 13 years later, I think it was March 25th of 2022, he claims back the roll record by one millisecond. Like there, there's no better story than that, truthfully. So um, he's continuing to try to improve his time and he has. It's almost now 31.7. This is a, uh, an 809, I believe, or 807, one of those. Yeah, 809. So um, yeah, I think there's still more to be done here in the coming year. This will definitely have at least one improvement, I think, in the coming year, uh, whether it's by Pollo or uh, Logan coming back. But honestly, I'm gonna say um, as well, Ray, because now Ray is second brawl by what the we will. You see that right? Um, I think Ray may finally pull through. I've really been rooting for Ray as well, just to get a we will world record glitch on Royal Skullman. That would be super sick to see. We shall see. Now, Daisy Circuit. This was definitely one track I didn't anticipate being improved last year, but it was by one millisecond by Logan, and. Uh, Actually, let me see. I'm curious now because I think that that was one of Luke's longest records that Luke had. I'm pretty sure that was one of his first tracks if my memory serves me right. Uh, let's see here. Hope you guys enjoy this more like lax beat uh, laid back type of pod podcast blah, type of video here. Um, yeah, so yeah, Luke's record lasted 1,127 days. That's crazy. That's the longest world record for the track by a lot. So, um, yeah, improved by uh, one millisecond. I think this still has more to go. It's just so hard to get the stair dive on all three laps. Uh, as you guys can see here, this is going to be a two for three stair dive run. Um, I think in the past, before this record, I want to say, uh, I think Luke did fail a three for three dive run. I remember watching a fail. It may have been by him. Uh, last year or, or longer. Um, regardless, still really impressive. This was still one of the stronger records, and this is still very strong as it is right now. Um, but once Logan or Luke or someone can clutch a 3 for 3 very good run, it's going to be like a, a mid to low 128.2. Um, but still, it's a very hard track to time trial. Um, just granted how precise and specific the stair dive is. But congrats, Logan. That's absolutely insane. Uh, hats off to you for doing the mighty grind to get this track and uh, yeah I think no one else has really been active here a lot of the top players a lot of these times are pretty old now uh, to be honest so uh, we'll see what happens in the future will this be beaten in the next year I'm going to say a maybe a question mark possibly we shall see now this track has had some mighty changes on both categories in the past year starting off here on no glitch uh it's been the era of like a mini revolution on, on koopa cape as well with jung woo pulling out some newer strats in the pipe um there's been a lot of task exclusive strategies in the pipe um where they really contort the bike kind of going on the ceiling literally in a lot of the the tunnel section but is this strategy here where you use the advantage of um the wall physics of the pipe and to really cut off a lot of time on that turn. Now, uh, one of my best friends in the community, Choi, um, I was talking to him, you know, in the past couple of months, and he said it's like a reverse maple treeway, which I think it makes a lot of sense because it's the same type of like contortion just mirrored where a maple treeway, you do pretty much the same physics uh, on the turn after the cannon. But for this, it's the exact same thing, just mirror going to a left-hand turn instead of a right-hand turn. So, um, yeah. Uh, you know, this track really has had a lot of different uh, strategy changes and revolutions ever since 2008. Um, th this track is completely irrecognizable from where it once was many years ago. And, um, you know, I feel like this is due for a refresh every, like, year now or something. I don't know. But, um, yeah, I think this will definitely be... All right, I'm going to predict. 
216 will happen this year. That's my prediction. And I think Luke and Jung Woo will continue to be trading hands here. Um, I know very recently Jung Woo almost reclaimed it again. I think his current PB was set maybe less than three months ago or two months ago, maybe. Um, and I think he's only like 30 ish milliseconds off of Luke now. Um, I, I think Luke has played this on and off recently too. Um, but yeah, like th this track just keeps on delivering after all this time. So it's very cool to see. Um, but yeah, we shall see. Um, one cool caveat apart from the world record is uh, a couple players have gotten their own 217s now, uh, including Fox. I actually didn't even notice that. He actually tied Justin's 990. Uh, like a month or two ago. So hats off to you, Fox. Um, that was really cool to see. He's also an old KC legend here, gained the first 218 many years ago. And uh, yeah, uh, we shall see. Uh, I think this will be a 216 in the coming year. Uh, only time will tell. We shall see. Water break, first off. How fitting having a water break on a water track, of course. All right, so we have Koopa Cape Glitch. And what's happened here is really impressive. Um, a newer entry strategy was discovered that makes this a lot faster. And also it was Justin that I think improved the record by like eight seconds or something. Let me see. Let's have the history pulled up here. Let's take a look here. Uh, yeah, so Justin improved the record by pretty much eight seconds in one day. A lot of that comes from how they're doing the setup once you're in the wall. If you've ever seen the first world records for the glitch here uh, for human side, you'll know that once you're riding on the seam, you have to turn around your bike to face the other way. But check this out now, this way. Look at this, like instantaneous turnaround and instant shrooming. So from what I can deduce, Justin found a strategy as he always does, where he pops a wheelie and then he instantly turns. And it's my guess that by doing that maneuver, it helps to kind of keep your bike anchor in that one spot uh, that you're on the track. Maybe that's kind of my guess. Um, but regardless though, um, prior to this, like I've got a prop here. I think you would have to very, very slightly hold your angle for a very long time to very, very slowly just articulate your bike around to not fall off like the one pixel seam or whatever inside the blocks. But um, yeah, to, to like instantaneously turn around and shroom right away, that's where a, a truckload this time save is coming from. But um, yeah, unfortunate alignment here at the end. I think literally if he were to re hopped alongside the wall at the end, it probably would have been a little bit faster, but this is key, getting his second world record now. And uh, this is very cool. He has two very strong glitch world records right now. So hats off the key, very, very impressive. And uh, yeah, I think this will also be improved in the coming year. This has been pretty active recently. So um, you would only suspect that more will be coming in the future. So we shall see. I'm very biased. My favorite track in the game. Demon finally also gets a mighty humongous improvement. He improves by almost one second as well on a no glitch category on Maple Tree Way. Almost gets the first uh, 212. I think Corrupted and Dolphin, his run, this run right here is like a 212 point high seven, like a low point eight maybe. And um, this is definitely still one of the hardest tracks to time trial in the game for this reason alone. That strategy is beyond specific. And I've recently played it too in the past year and just learning it, it's, it's just so dang hard because like, as you're seeing, like when you're colliding, like you have to preserve your momentum and you're having like these horizontal hops that can preserve your momentum. And I practiced in Dolphin myself during last year and every single frame that your hop is not like precise you're losing like 30 to 40 milliseconds or so. Um, and I think after like frame three or four of being on the floor after getting the horizontal uh, bonk, um, you no longer have enough speed to continue drift. 
So it is very precise to maintain your momentum going horizontally like this. Um, all the while with Demon's world class driving here, uh, Demon has been by far the best player to have ever graced this track. He continues to prove that time and time again. I'm very happy for my boy Demon. Um, this this run still has some improvements objectively that it can have, but for what it is with the very first really, really good 3-for-3 three three turn skip run here, um, this is just a an amazing feat to be had. Um, I know more than anything, Demon would have really wanted that 2-12 of having a better ending here, but um, yeah, like he has, as you're going to see, like a 2.5 second lead on second place on a no glitch track. Um, he's the king of the tree away for a reason, and I personally don't think he'll ever be beaten here for the longest time. That's just kind of my opinion. Um, but yeah, so will this be improved in the coming year? If Demon doesn't play, no, I don't think so. Um, if he does, maybe he'll finally get the 212. Uh, I think Demon comes back every once in a while to the game. Um... But he's been more set recently with uh, reclaiming the glitch category of this track. So we'll get to that now. And this is a 133 by Dez coming up. And uh, I don't know how they got this fast of a time without having low cannons in the run. Casey don't know what a low cannon is on this track. Basically, when you're colliding with the fence and the cannon at a precise uh, timing, basically you... As the name suggests, you get a low cannon where when you're getting out of the cannon, you slow fall like like, like the distance like very fast. Then you can turn around and uh, main turbo boost right away. But as you can see here, he comes out of the cannon at full speed. So he goes a lot farther out and it takes longer to break from like almost max speed to zero to do a standstill empty to turn around. Where when you're falling a lot slower at the beginning of where the cannon ends you land a lot sooner at a slower speed so all I have to say you can do a standstill main turbo a lot quicker as well um and so i don't know how des manages the super jank angle from being that far away with the spear's most minuscule uh pathetic uh boost that it has for like an uh, main turbo i don't know how that works honestly and um I still, that's really funny that he has the, the branch bonk in there too. You kind of see that more notably in online play because you're going through that path to get like the item box or whatever in online play. But um, yeah, the, the leaves are masking where the branch is. So it's just so, so cool that he got the record with that being in it too as well. But um, yeah, I think Demon got almost within like less than point 0.1 of reclaiming this in the past year. And then Des had like a one second improvement after uh, that happening. So with that in mind, I think this will definitely go down in the coming year. I think we're going to see more battles between Des and Demon. It's just going to be a matter of if Des improves first before Demon or if Demon gets it before Des. And Demon has been trying to do uh, two for three one shroom clips as well. So will we see a 129? We shall see. I have no idea. Water break. You guys should have a water break too, by the way. Stay hydrated, by the way. Now, this track, both categories, has gotten the business too in the past year. Barney finally pulling through. Congrats, man, for getting the first 150 here on GV. And, um, you know, I mentioned earlier in this video, but, you know, the past, I don't know, year, year and a half, there's been a lot more of a focus of uh, players trying to implement, uh, like, prior to be thought task exclusive strategies or just strategies that were just not really utilized due to their sheer difficulty. And Barney took it upon himself to start doing this task shroom strategy here now. Um, you know, he reclaimed the world record here with the old shroom strategy, but then he started implementing the task shroom on his own. And um, I always think that's very cool just to see people really trying to push the bounds of the game and just not really waiting around for things to kind of happen, um, you know, in the coming years and everything. Um, I, feel, I feel like that's how not only this game, but like any game in general just tends to progress. It's just a matter of when people finally decide to kind of hunker down and really grind out a lot of the harder strategies. And then as you'll see, like the standard changes, right? And like the players have to follow suit to be competitive. 
And so what you're going to see when you see the worldwide top 10 chart here is it's, it's completely irrecognizable from a year ago. Um, because honestly, the Tash Shroom strategy seemed very precise, and it still is, but um, I think almost every single person now on the worldwide charts, they do uh, the Shroom strategy 3 for 3 now. So it just shows how it just paves the way of the standard and meta shifting and progressing in the future um, and all the players adapting. So um, I think at one point during last year, it was a uh, Norwegian player Barning as number one and then American regional from second to 10th. And then it was Norway top two and Fox came back and got second worldwide. Um, that was really cool to see as well. Now it's a bit more of a mix in here too. Most recently, Connor is within a uh, striking distance. Uh, Connor's run was ahead during lap three. I watched it recently. So this will definitely go down in the coming year. I think Connor will successfully reclaim. We shall see. And maybe give a Barney uh, a challenge. We shall see. At the end of last year, Japanese player Niaki reclaimed this finally from the Australian dominant player Jiren. And Jiren answers very fast with this absurdly impressive run. It's a 45.4 now. This is such a clean run. Like, I'm sure they may he may tell everyone that, you know, he can still improve it a lot. But this is a, a pretty damn good run for the strategies that they're using now. Um, it was, dude, I can't believe it was, I think it was 2019 when the revolution of the rock happened with having the inside strategy, inside drifting strategy happening now. But um, so shout out to Niaki as well for reclaiming this being the OG pioneer still trying to claim the rock after all this time. Now, Dry Dry Ruins was Justin's run in the past year. I forget. Let's find out together, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see. Uh, yeah, it was July of 2022 and Justin approved his own world record. And uh guess a 146.8 here as we're watching right now and um definitely uh logan got very very close to dethroning uh justin here so uh i i wonder if uh, justin was kind of playing in response to trying just to not lose the record here possibly um this is still one of my favorite tracks to play there's just uh, there's just a lot going on here at this point um Especially in recent years too, like as I alluded to like on Grumble as well, like a lot of newer strategies were implemented. I think Luke tried to um, usher in a lot of those uh, progressions too, which he certainly um, did that very well. And then uh, Justin also followed suit with um, implementing the tomb exit also on lap three when he got the first record here for the first time from Luke. And um, yeah, th there is so many players are very good at this track so i think multiple people are more than capable of getting the world record here so i think we might see some uh changing faces here on this track during this year um if logan tries to uh claim this for the first time uh coming back to this track this year that's possible uh justin sells more in the tank uh luke can certainly reclaim this as well um Shout out to Ace, by the way. I know he's been playing that recently, too. And I think he got some recent best on splits. So, um, yeah, we shall see. Also, Fox played this in the past year, I think, and he got some very good splits. So there's a lot of contenders that can uh, do some damage here. So uh, we shall see. But uh, again, congrats to Justin for uh, still uh, holding down the fort here. And uh, yeah, as you guys can see here with the worldwide top 10, uh, there's a lot of very uh, capable players on the charts here that can definitely uh, do some more damage. Um, but yeah, moving on now to Moonview Highway. <clears throat> and this track got its first 142 by Logan. Uh, this is a really cool run. And, you know, it's always been the mystery of like, what would the car patterns have to look like on a 142? Do you have to beat the car cycles on lap three or can you otherwise just do it without it, right? And um, as you'll come to see, if you haven't watched this run before, um, they don't have to beat the car cycles on lap three. Um, I want to say it may have been Bent that did a human theory task here where he got like a 142.8 and it still didn't have to beat the cars either. Maybe Luke also did a human theory task here. If not, he did have a very big um, 
142 fail here like over a year ago now at this point I think um but yeah like there's been no real significant changes here apart from the drift storage that was done I don't know two years ago maybe like 2021 I want to say um and the drift storage is basically just this here at the end where when you collide with the last boost panel the wheelie is collapsing and then you have that um uh that drift to get that boost after the, the boost panel as well um the only big mistake i saw here i think this trick was a little bit high let's see yeah he had a pretty high trick here on that but apart from that uh logan gets most of the chains but um you know i think humanly you can beat the cars on lap three it's just gonna be being this truck here um and even when uh and like human theory tasks from what i remember watching if he beat that truck you can still evade the blue car that was actually one of my concerns just kind of theorizing like what the upper limit would be for this track but if my memory serves me right you can beat that truck and you can still evade that blue car as well so um yeah congrats to logan that's a really cool sub to be getting at this point in the game and uh yeah do i see this being improved in the coming year i'm gonna be like a question mark maybe uh, if Luke or Breaks and try to come back around again and try to improve the track once more, I think both are more than capable. We shall see. This track is one of my favorites of all time, and both categories have had some very interesting progress. So, in the past year, Zeke's Mighty Rain was finally dethroned by none other than Jared, one of the best players I've ever played this track. Shout out to Jared. And um, it was just a long time saga of Zeke being the dominant player here for many, many years. And this track has had its controversial past of just, you know, players with questionable legitimacy and just things like that. Um, I have a video kind of summarizing that with, um, you know, uh, Zeke's former record, like a backstory and everything. If you guys want to watch it, you can definitely check that out down below. But, um, yeah, uh, Jared was the record holder for the glitch side for a very long time, and he was more than capable on the Nogo side of things, so I'm very happy that he pulled through, and he improved twice, and Jared had, his last record here was really, really good. It was practically, I think it was 219 pace into lap 3, uh, but then it slowly kind of dismantled from there, but he still had another healthy improvement. And uh, Zeke eventually answers with this 220-099, and uh, as you'll come to see, a very uh, unorthodox strategy being used on lap three. Recently spoke to Zeke, and uh, what he mentioned is that, you know, it was partially for trying to, like, get good quote-unquote QM, which I'm not going to bore you with the semantics of, like, the long definition of what that is. Just, you know, long story short, it's just, you know, just partially luck, partially like sub pixel things just to make things possible or not on the racetrack i probably butchered that i apologize but anyway getting the actual hop out is like really inconsistent and so going at full speed into the um the uphill tends to give you a little bit more leeway of the hop actually coming out if you peep the input display when i got to that point lap three he did click on the hop button but no hop came out um but it wasn't just for that. Zeke mentioned too that on like a 219.9 pace, the, the wavy road is really inconvenient on either side. So he actually did it at the time for the wavy road section as well. Um, but at this point, it's not really required anymore. Um, he successfully came back and reclaimed the record. And this will most definitely see a 219 in the coming year. Any more than that? I think so. That's all I'm going to say. You know, I think it might be, you know, maybe like a mid 219. We shall see. We shall see. But um, yeah, Sean finally got second worldwide. I think Sean can definitely possibly uh, beat the first 219 if he's still actively playing. Jared can come back. We shall see. Ladies and gentlemen, we now introduce Fox on the racetrack. You heard that right. The legendary player former number one overall, one of the most dominant players of all time in the game, Norwegian player Fox. He finally gets his first world record once more in like five plus years. This was a real treat to see. Um, if you guys don't know about Fox, he's like, he really ushered the way of being like one of the most dominant players in recent times. Um, you know, 
from 2008 to current day, it's been further progressing where the dominant number one overall player was like more and more dominant on like more cumulative tracks over a period of time. But it was very hard during my time even too because there's a lot more players going on. The game was still new at that time. There's still a lot more strategies being overturned um, at all times as well. So fending off the active player base is another skill to have. But over a longer period of time, uh, Fox was the first one to supersede having more than 10 world records at one time. Um, this, it, it, His resume is beyond impressive for what he's done in this game. And he's been one of the most best and dominant players in the online space now for quite a number of years. That's been more so where his interest, it seems, has lied for many, many years now. Um, I think just his passion for the time trials just was you no know, shelf for him and just kind of moved on. But um, he's been hitting them TTs recently. His streams are great. I love watching him stream. Shout out to you, Fox. You're awesome, man. I'm very happy for you, dude. This, this made me smile just seeing this here to see you finally pull through. He had a couple of fails on his streams in the past. And um, yeah, he's had some fails on some other tracks too. Um, you know, Toast Factory, DDR, other tracks as well. And uh, yeah, I think this will have some more competition. Uh, Emil almost reclaimed this recently. Uh, Fox being here, if Jared comes back. Uh, Luke uh, recently got like a point one, I think. So there's a lot of activity on this category as well. So I anticipate this track being a low 208 by the end of this year by who, I don't know, but it's gonna be a couple of faces trading the title here, I think. But um, again, major congrats to Fox. This is awesome, man. I'm very happy for you. And um, yeah, we shall see uh, what comes in the coming year here. All exciting things. We come now to Rainbow Road. A lot has happened here, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, so first off on the no list side of things, Flair makes his mighty return. He successfully converts on some runs and he beats Kaede and he lands this massive run here. It's a low 224.4. Two, two and this uh, this run is very, very solid and very good for what strategies are used here. And, you know, it's still kind of getting near his limit now, but um, Kaede has got some recent new best known splits in the past couple of months as well. Um, it seemed like Kaede was just kind of, you know, just chipping away, um, you know, month after month, uh, improvement after improvement. And um, I think Flair probably did take a break for a period of time, I would think. Um, apart from that, I think Flair has played some different tracks now. Um, I see you, Flair. Making some good improvements on, on some other tracks, you know. I think he got Worldwide Toss on DK Summit. He's been doing Maple Tree away, I think. And also BC3 Shortcut, a very good time by Flair as well. And um, he finally circles around here to reclaim the road. So um, it's still one of the coolest uh, times to watch, in my opinion. Uh, it's certainly um, the, the outlier of a world record for the Nova side of things because it's with a cart of all things. Uh, we play Mario Bike Wii, not Mario Kart Wii, right? So, uh, yeah, uh, this is still a very cool time to see. And, um, you know, do I think this will be improved in the coming year? I definitely think so. Um, you may notice, you know, if you guys have watched my annual, you know, reactions and analytics of this year after year, I'm becoming a bit more ambitious on my uh, predictions now, uh, you know, because everyone just proves me wrong, which I I'm all for it, man. Hey, I I'm here for it, man. So congrats to all the fellas here, all right? But um, yeah, I think uh, Kaede is still gonna be grinding his face off here to try and get an improvement. And I think Flair will always be here in the background, just lurking in the depths and still uh, doing his work in the lab, so to say. So, um, I think the best known splits, they're really, really close to a 223. I think BKS laps two and three are like a 950 now or something crazy. Um, I really don't know if there's any more specific unused carding strategies on this track. I think it's near maxed out, but um, again, I'm happily to be proven wrong. So regardless, Congrats to Flair. Uh, this was a real treat to uh, see you get this in the past year. And uh, we shall see what the, you know, future improvements will hold. Fellas, the glitch category of this track as of, uh, let's get the correct date here. 
February 8th. Until now, has been improved by almost 14 seconds. Just look at that. What in the world, man? Oh my god. It was the beginning of February, I believe, where Justin, he's the one playing this time trial now, by the way. The madman, he finds a way to use the shooting star so fitting on this track of all tracks. Using outward drifting bike mechanics to get a clip off the fence and objectively a much easier way to glitch this track now. I'm sure everyone watching my video here has watched the amazing channel Summoning Salt, the America We Revolution videos, all those things as well. Um, the story of Arthur being the first on the glitches track with the insane quacker strategy. To have this discovered, here's some perspective. How long that took to be done humanly to like before February, I think only four people have ever glitched this track. In less than one week, the former world record of Logan went from being the world record to not even being on the regional top 10. That's how many players this has allowed to actually glitch this track now. And the clip, you can get a one shroom glitch now. It's humanly possible to do a three for three run here. Really hard, obviously, but it is possible now. And, um,. Justin has ice in his veins. He goes for the cart strategy with the outside drifting bike on lap two. He goes for the otherwise just almost just just flexing to get the shroomless cut laps two and three as well to save like what 0.5 maybe. But this run is very strong for what it is. Um, it's one thing to admit the glitch. It's one thing to race the other two laps very fast as well. Um, Justin is just the GOAT man. Um, Hunter was the first one to land it after uh, Justin released the strategy. Shout out to Hunter, man. You're great. And uh, it just went so quickly now to a 156. So this coming year, it'll be two for three. And I'm going to be ambitious here. I'm going I'm to say there's going to be a three for three. We shall see. Now, that's the nitros. I've earned some water. You have as well. Let us watch some retros so both categories here have some improvements uh surprise i don't think so so kc has improved this again in the past year i think this is a 112 656 i want to say and it still has some very minor uh you know mistakes that can have some um, yielding time save but still very strong I think Casey wants a 112.5 in the future. And he has failed those runs too. I think the current best known pace by him, it is literally a 112.5 into lap three uh, in the fail. But um, recently in the past year, uh, Caleb House, AKA Guy, he's been playing this once more and gained some pretty spicy runs. I've been able to tune to his streams once in a while. And uh, yeah, I think this year, this will be improved once more, but I'm rooting for Guy to reclaim this track and to give Casey some competition here, because that'll be pretty fun. Uh, both players are more than capable of getting a 112.5 here. Um, I think in the past year, Luke also got a low 0.7 here, the clock in that third worldwide. Um, Cole hasn't been active in years. I don't think he really plays the game anymore. So I think the only three players that have recently actively played this track at a high level um, that could possibly do some damage here is Casey himself, Guy reclaiming, and maybe Luke possibly getting his first Spear Nuglish World Record. We shall see, possibly. But uh, only time will tell, of course, as with everything. This was not what I was anticipating as well in the past year. So I need to get some more stats here, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see. Peach Beach. Arrow had his former world record for 843 days. Before that, Brakeson had his legendary 1,060 day world record of 1 minute point 3. It was not in my Mary Kurt Wee Time Trial 2022 bingo card to have this have the sub 1 minute time. And it happened. And it was by Guy. 
We're talking about the guy, no pun intended. But we're talking about Mr. Caleb before. And uh, he claims this and gets the first sub one minute time. So, so cool to see. Um, from what I can remember, after him getting this, um, he briefly started going for um, for three for three attempts where you can actually like reverse clip on a tree going forward lap one, which I think that saves maybe one or two seconds, maybe, I want to say. Um, and I think he has some stats on the stream. I think he only hit that like three or four times like per stream or something, but it wasn't any real uh, fruitful results. Um, I wouldn't anticipate him to try to improve it again this year. If he does, might be going for some three for three runs. We shall see. We shall see. Anyway, moving on. We have Yoshi Falls, and I actually want to see how long this has been standing. Yep, so Davis' current run here has been standing for 846 days. His overall reign has actually been for over a thousand days. Shout out to David, that is awesome. And um, it does make sense why this has stood for a little while. This is infamously just a very frustrating track to play. A lot of very lucky elements to it. Uh, very, very bouncy. Very hard to control the bike on the racetrack. On this one in particular. And, uh, you know, this still has quite a ways to go. Definitely like a 58.4. Um, I think David maybe came back very briefly last year. I think he streamed for like a couple of days on this track and has some fails. I think so. Um, I could be... Uh, no, memory could be going wrong here, but I think so. Um... So I wouldn't be surprised if this still stands for another year. Um, however, apart from that, I wouldn't be surprised either if this gets like a pretty healthy improvement in the coming year. If David comes back and converts and gets it back, or well, and improves his own record. If Breaks and reclaims it, maybe if Casey applies himself fully here. Um, shout out to Avalash too, he got a very good third worldwide time here as well. Um, all these players here are more than capable of doing a lot of damage here. So um, we shall see what Yoshi Falls brings us in the coming year. Now, we come to GB2. And did I predict this to go down last year? Maybe? No, I don't think I did. Not for no glitch anyway. Um, of course, Justin... He discovers a faster strategy on lap three. Where after this turn, uh, the blocks are down for this left facing turn. And you can get a slip drift off the um, the blocked turn, the jagged edges and such. And you can save upwards, I think, 60 milliseconds if done really well lap three, which is a stupid amount of time saved for how optimized and short this category is for a track. Um, and so Justin got really close to beating Sosis here, and um, he had a lot of fails on Justin's stream, and Sosis came back, and he successfully improved his time with a very impressive low point seven. Um, I'm sure Sosis would be the first one to tell everyone that he could definitely do a lot better than this, and he might want a lot more, I think so. Um, when Sosis streams, is a real treat. He's one of the best players in the whole world. I love watching his time trial streams. Um, seeing him apply himself a lot further. So I think this will definitely get another improvement in the coming year by who? Not really too sure, but maybe the first point six. We shall see. This category did not get an improvement in the past year. Um, this wasn't 2022. It was 2021, right? Let's see. Yeah, this was July 2021. The first sub 50 by Logan and it's still the current record right now. Um, and I think this will still stand in, in the coming year. Um, if Logan doesn't play this again, and if Vincent doesn't try playing it again, uh, this track is probably one of the most inactive glitch slash shortcut categories in the whole game. Um, for good reason. I, I think this one in particular, like, it's just very difficult and probably mind-draining to be playing it. Um, although, I think now that they do, like, the task um, clip now, uh, that they did on lap one. Um, I think that makes it a lot more bearable than trying to contemplate a three for three pole clip here, um, like Leaf tried doing in years past. But um, still a very impressive run regardless. 
Um, but yeah, I think if uh, if Logan and Vincent don't play in the coming year, uh, this is probably a safe bet that it won't be beaten during this year. Because again, this track has been almost barren wasteland, not active almost at all in the past year. Um, so we shall see. We shall see. I have some pretty bold predictions now on this track for this coming year. Mario Racewood. Sosa still has his record here, undefeated, has a very healthy lead here. But I'm going to predict that in 2023, we shall see the first sub 141 here. You may ask why. Well, recently players are trying to push the bounds of Daisy Mock Bike here and using the Task Stream strategy. I think the current players that have tried, Casey, Logan, and I think Emil's run is Daisy as well, but his run is a bit older. But in recent months, both Casey and Logan have done uh, Daisy Mock here, getting some pretty impressive splits as well from what I've seen. And so I think, you know, whether it's Daisy Mock Bike to do it, or if it's just activity to provoke uh, Sosis to play again, because when Sosis got this run a while ago, he did mention that he wants to eventually get a 140 here. And so, you know, his intention was with this bike, he really didn't specify, you know, trying like the Daisy Mock strategy. Um, and so you can definitely do it with Funky Kong, but it's very, very hard. Obviously very hard with using the mock bike, but um, I think to get more activity on this track, um, you know, this track is pretty dormant for a while as well, apart from the recent Daisy improvements here in the past year. Um, this is a pretty quiet track in the past couple of years as far as activity sake. But I think it's gonna take some surge of activity here just to kind of uh, provoke the sleeping giant here of Sosis here having such a healthy lead here and otherwise a really strong run honestly the point one is fantastic um he has had better paces and runs as well but this is still a really really strong and very good world record here uh, by sosis but um yeah that's my bold ambitious prediction into the coming year here on the mighty raceway one of my favorite tracks that concludes the shell cup let's move on now to the banana cup and we're starting off on Shy Guy Beach, where, again, both categories have had their really interesting improvements. Um, just kidding, LOL. We're doing Sherbert Land first. Uh, again, uh, Sosa's here. He also has um, Sherbert Land for the longest time. His 203.750 that's playing right now has stood for a long time. Let's hydrate and see how long it stood for. Wow. As of recording, this record here on screen has been studying, uh, studying, standing for 1,333 days. It was set on July 10th, 2019. I think this will be uh, Sosa's his first four-year world record if he's not beaten this year, or if he doesn't improve himself. Yeah, looking at his stats page, that, that'll be his first four-year record. I really do not think this run will be beaten in the coming year. Uh, if Sosis plays again, he has more to go, which of course I think it will be improved. I don't think he has any reason to play this again. Um, the only recent player that had the potential to do it, but I don't think is really trying anymore, is American player Paul. He got second worldwide here with a 204.0. The end of his run is quite heartbreaking. Um, the ending here to the finish line went very poorly for him. It would have otherwise been, I think, like a mid 230.8, I think is what Paul said. And um, I think he has had the splits too to defeat Sosis here. Apart from that, this has again been another pretty dormant track of almost no activity. Um, shout out to Australian player Felix. I think he's been playing the past year, I think, or was that longer than a year ago? If it was in the past year, then definitely I think if he grinds some more, he might be another contender to possibly challenge Sosis here. But um, this track is very unique where of course it's Toadat and the Magic Cruiser. This has the most chain wheelies out of any track in the game for like any category, I believe. And um, you know, despite the Magi's acceleration being pretty decent, uh, the chains do matter still at the end of the day. So there, there's just, I think there's 15 chains. Uh, and the entire race here. 
But um, yeah, this run is really freaking good. But again, Sosis could certainly improve it at any time that he wants to, but I think he would play something else first before doing this. But um, we shall see. Is there going to be any improvement here in the coming year? I don't know. I would love to see it though. We shall see. This run is really freaking cool. American player Jack gets a 112 doing the craziest strategy innovation on lab three. Literally when I saw it, I smiled ear to ear because it's just stuff like that, that seeing some innovations like that, it's just super clever and really cool. Um, this has had its revolutions, um, you know, 2019 when the more precise uh, pole clip was discovered where you can actually do a one shimmer with the magic cruiser. And this went from being a spear one for three, like a one, 50 something to now it's like a 112 you know um this has traded hands a couple times in the past year uh very exciting to see but jack has ice in his veins seriously the pond is partially intended for being like an ice track obviously but um i want you guys to watch what he does here on lap three just watch just watch just watch Oh my god, dude. It, uh, I, it gets me every time, dude. Like, that maneuver saves, I think, a full second. I'm pretty sure. I think he had that in his video description. Uh, if not, it's close to one second time save there as well. Because uh, um, you have to fall down, stand still, empty, turn around, release, go to the last key checkpoint, uh, slow down, uh, stand still, empty, turn around, and go to the finish line. But he cleverly uses boost and momentum and hopping around just to be keeping that momentum going, hitting the key checkpoint, and it's going to the finish line. Very impressive. Jack, you're crazy. You're awesome. That's so cool to see. Congratulations. Now, you may have heard me slip the news here, but there is a glitch category on this track now. We'll get to that in a little bit. This track did have its improvement finally. On the Noglus side of things, we shall, of course, get some more stats. Who doesn't like some cool stats once in a while, fellas? Let's see. Well, let's take a gander here. Shy Guy Beach. So. In 2022, we saw Sosis. His reign was defeated by British player Dara. Shout out to Dara, man. You're awesome. He reclaimed the world record after so many uh, trials and tribulations over the past couple of years of trying on and off. And um, eventually this was reclaimed, I think first by Sosis and then, let's see. No, Casey beat Dara first and Casey had a couple of improvements and then Sosis did successfully come back and did contend versus Casey here. But now Casey got the first point three here, still has the world record and um, yeah, Casey has had some pretty good dominance now on a couple of tracks at roll record level in the past year. He's really uh, blossomed a lot in the, in the past year. Um, it was so cool to see Sosa successfully come back here as well to contend on this track. I think the storyline of Casey and Sosa doesn't end here on the Battle for the Beach. Uh, I think this will, will be improved at least once in the coming year. Um, I would love to see Dara give an effort again. Uh, from what I remember, I think he wasn't really interested in trying anymore, but... I think to see all three trying, I think that would really be very cool. Ladies and gentlemen, we have now arrived to the glitch category of Shy Guy Beach. This is freaking crazy. Um, who would have guessed? Of course, it's Justin that does a significant discovery. This is an outside drifting bike. There's some interesting mechanics with the outside drifting bike. And what Justin explained to me recently is how um, momentum works with outside drifting bike mechanics into a wall. If you've never seen this before, this is quite a treat. And uh, this was previously, uh, there was a glitch known uh, getting a clip off of the bomb in the sand waiting, I think, over three minutes for the boat cycle to come around the island and have that there. 
This was only uh, glitchable in the fast lap fashion for both um, RTA and TAS. And then we come to this. Check this out. Literally falling out of bounds, gets a wall clip, goes far enough to get the respawn, go backwards here because the checkpoint is right there. Excel because um, you have to go to Excel with, with this bike. You don't need a standstill MT. And you complete your time trial. Shout out to Vincent. He also got the roll record in GBT a couple of tracks back a couple of years ago. And um, to see him get this monstrous run is really absurdly impressive. This has stood for a while now. I think this will stand uh, for the coming year. But um, we shall see if there's any more competition to be given uh, to Vincent here. Um, but absurdly impressive. Nonetheless, it's one of my favorite times to watch now um, of all the tracks in the game. All right, we come on now to DS Delfino Square, and um, I feel like this has been one of the forgotten time trials, I think, in the whole uh, timesheet. Um, I don't think people talk about this record enough because I, even me, I forgot how low this track is now. It's a 203.5, and uh, the Shroomless Dock was finally implemented a couple years ago. And um, this was another example of like a, a, a task, almost task exclusive or just deemed as just too hard to do RTA to be realistic to go for in runs. But um, standards have changed. The meta has changed. Uh, players are just trying a lot more harder strategies now. And um, yeah, we come now to this two for three dock run that Luke has. Um, Logan was the first one to dethrone uh, Luke here. He was very dominant for a very long time with his 204.2. Very, very strong um, no dock run. Um, and then Luke took the torch and really learned this very well. And he really separated himself from the pack still. Um, and still to this day, I think come the summer, it will be two full years since the Shroomless dock was implemented. And literally, these are the only two players that have a dock time still, to my memory. Um, the entire rest of the, of the top 10 doesn't do the strategy at all. Um, it is it is insanely, absurdly very difficult to do, uh, for good reason. So, will this be improved in the coming year? Um, I'm going to wager... I'm going to say yes. I feel like Logan might feel like coming back to this track in the coming year and trying to get this record back. And if that happens, I think Luke will definitely try and push for a 3 for 3 dock run here. Um, I think the tail between Luke and uh, Logan on this track is not done yet. Um, those are the only two players that have been uh, remotely active on this top 10 um, in the past year. Um, shouts to, I think, uh, uh, Kenny. He got a very good 204.3 here, I think. But he does not go for the dock. I think if he were to go for the dock, he would be a very strong contender to get the world record as well. So, um, shout out to Kenny. He goes by Akiza now. Um, I think he could definitely be a very strong contender. But apart from that, he's the only other player that's improved in the past year on this track. So, we shall see. We shall see. Waluigi Stadium, one of my personal favorite tracks. And this category, the No Glitch got a healthy improvement in the past year by Connor. Is now a 148.275. And this run is really, really good, if I'm being honest here. Um, Connor does want a 140, uh, 147 long term, but for what this one, I've been speaking for too long, apologies. Uh, for what this run is, it's really clean and very consistent. This is uh, regarded by many uh, top level T tiers as one of the hardest no glitch categories in the entire game uh, for good reason. There's just so much tech that is infused into this track. Uh, it is so fun at a high level, but uh, it is very frustrating when things aren't going your way on this track in particular. Um, it will be really cool to see Ace try to give uh, Connor some competition again. Um, I think Ace only recently has been trying a little bit of Coconut Mall and some Dry Dry Ruins recently. Um, he may have tried Waluigi like over a year ago, um, but definitely it's been the uh, the Ace and the Connor show for the past couple of years. And I want to give a giant shout out as well to French player Totem because 
I think come the summer, uh, his former 148.8 world record will be 10 years old. And guys, in 10 years, in 10 years, on a no glitch track, only four people have beaten his world record. That is like almost unheard of. Um, it just really shows how far ahead of his time Totem was on the track. Um, but it's really cool now in recent years that you know, modern driving tech and strategies has seen now a very low 148. Congratulations, Connor. It's a very, very epic run. Definitely one of my favorite runs uh, to watch um, out of the entire um, categories in the game. So uh, we shall see. I think this might see at least one improvement. Uh, we shall see. Uh, Shao says uh, Znaki, I think his name is as well, third worldwide uh, Brazilian player. If he were to apply himself some more, I think he could also do some more damage. But um, we shall see. We shall see. Now, the glitch category of Waluigi Stadium, we have Hunter with the first and the only two for three glitch run of this track. Um, you guys know the drill. I'm going to look at some stats right now. Let's see when exactly he set this run. Yep, it was February of last year. So a little bit over a year ago now. And um, I think this is arguably one of the current strongest records in the game. Just for how insanely precise getting the, um, just getting a two for three run is at this point. Um, I think when Logan played, he wasn't going for a two for three. I think when Tony had as well, he didn't go for a two for three. Um, I think Core when he played, he was not going for a two for three. I think the only one that's really bothered to try and go for a two for three uh, is Hunter. And uh, just this whole revolution of glitching this for RT viable strategies is super, super interesting. Um, I made a video on the whole history uh, a couple of years ago, actually. I'll have it in the description if you guys care to watch that. It's actually one of my favorite videos I ever made. Um, I had a lot of uh, very good help from a lot of people. Shout out to the whole uh, task community as well. Um, they're awesome. Um, this is just really, really cool. This improved the record by, I think, eight seconds. Let me see. Yeah, it was like 7.5 seconds when, uh, when Hunter um, got this run with the two for three. He grinded his face off for this and I was just so happy to see when Hunter finally pulled through. Um, I think, of course, Logan is very capable um, of possibly reclaiming this with a two for three. He has one of the most impressive glitch shortcut resumes of all time, obviously. Uh, he could definitely contend uh, Hunter here, but um, we shall see. Uh, this definitely requires a two for three now and it's just very, very tough to do. So uh, we'll see what happens in the future. I need some more water here, fellas. Coming now to the Leaf Cup, we got some Desert Hills. And Sosis, his run here, 134.397, I believe. It still stands. To my surprise, so you have to, uh, the top 10s that are here, uh, humongous shout outs to What is Loaf. He's made the most awesome time trial tools, including uh, making like the vanilla leaderboards like that in the game. Uh, shout out to you, man. You're, you're, you're great. You're awesome. Just to have these. Uh, really cool quality of life things. He also made this input um, uh, input display as well for the ghost data. Um, so uh, yeah, just super cool overall. Having a lot of cool uh, time trial tools for the recording community um, for the game. Um, so uh, with all that in mind, um, when making the top 10 for this video, I see Brakeson almost beat Sosis. He has a 134.451. He hasn't uploaded his ghost data yet. I've been very curious for what Brakeson's laps are. Um, but it's really cool to see someone finally almost dethroning Sosis here. Uh, again, looking at some stats. He, he, this is another thousand plus day old world record that Sosis has. It's a thousand eighty six days. Um, definitely Sosis could improve again at some point. Paul can reclaim it back. Brayson can definitely get it. Um, I think Justin could do some damage here too. Casey Kenny did the spear recently in the past year. Um, this run is still very, very strong for a two for three lucky cut run. Um, 
But yeah, I, I'm going to say, I think this year, I would have to say we might get an improvement. Because now breaks in is within striking distance. A lot of players can do the damage here. It's just getting the luck on the lucky wheelie cut on all three laps. We shall see. Now, we go to the shortcut category here. This is by Justin. It's a 130-990. Hallam has a Sid for Let's take a gander here. Huh. November 2021. Interesting. Almost 500 days. And there is a lot more in the tank here. Um, there are some unused strategies for this category. There's a much harder strategy that can yield a 129. Um, the, I, I can link a video to that in the description below. Uh, I believe it is on Justin's channel for um, that more insane strategy for this track. Um, apart from that, there is getting the lucky cut on this category too, where uh, if you guys look back at the cuts, they have like the very dark, uh, heavy out of bounds dirt. And I think when like the, the planes meet to a point, I think you have like a one frame window where you can bounce off of that and you don't get counted as out of bounds. Um, I think so the, uh, the best known pace I think it's by David, and he had the most monstrous run that uh, just uh, succumbs to a fail on lap three, unfortunately, but it was on 129 pace. So um, there is still quite the distance to go on this category in particular. It's just very difficult to do. Um, a couple of players can definitely claim this. Uh, David can reclaim it. Brayson can reclaim it. Logan can reclaim it. Um, obviously, Justin can do Justin things, of course, and... Uh, uh, improve it too. So a lot of talented players can definitely improve this category. Um, I think we might see some uh, some improvement here in the coming year. I'm, I'm more optimistic now, fellas, in, in the coming year with uh, a lot more improvements because if you really see, literally as mentioned, all the majority of all glitch, shortcut, and no glitch, no shortcut categories were all improved in the past year. So we love to see it. We're here for it. It's awesome. It's epic. Now, we have Luke here. His 216, 366 still stands. And this run is just really, really impressive. Very consistent, gets almost all the chain wheelies and has pretty decent luck on the uh, on the low jumps. Um, those of you who are newer to the game or have never played the game before, these low jumps here, you can get quote unquote good or bad low jumps. Um, Long story short, like a good one is getting like the, the lowest air possible where you're landing as soon as possible. You can get in the wheelie as soon as possible. So you can be at top speed as fast as possible as well. That was a mouthful, but hopefully you can follow the whole thing. A bad low jump is basically where you're in the air for a lot longer. It's a lot higher of a low jump. Um, and especially in ghost comparisons, it's much more apparent. You can lose like over 0.2 in that section alone. May not sound like a lot, but it is a truckload on uh, this category in particular. Shoutouts again to Kenny, aka Going Now by Akiza on the recent year. He almost beat Luke here. Uh, his run was actually off screening Luke's run into the finish line. He got past the last turn, but he got drop chain wheelies for both chains. So I think he has like a 4 2 1. So I think his run or like a 4 4 1 or something like that. So. His run would have been like a low um, 216.2 or a very high 216.1. It uses a new strategy now on lap three, also discovered by Justin too in the past year, of course. Who, who else would it be, right? Um, where you get a very low jump clipping off the side of the ramp. Um, you know, it's been known you can do that for a lot of years, but you wouldn't get like, like lunged forward. And the only real application that was pretty useful was landing on the brick wall in like a task application. But he found a way, I guess, from what I can really recall, that you can be lunged forward and save a lot of time. Um, and Kenny ended up doing that on lap two of his run, I think. So um, I definitely think 215 is on the horizon here, especially utilizing that newer strategy um, come just, you know, people doing it in the future. So I think uh, Kenny will finally seal a deal here in the coming year. Um, 
I think Luke will definitely try to answer here. That's kind of my assumption. Um, it'll be really cool when people go for that low ramp three for three. I think that'll be a very impressive feat to be done. So uh, more business to be done on this category. We shall see. Now we arrive to one of the coolest runs in the game, in my opinion. BC3, man. Shortcut. This has been uh, one of the most iconic uh, categories for this game ever since 2008. I feel like even most casual people know about the BC3 normal shortcut. Uh, the quote unquote ultra shortcut from a platform back was discovered uh, late 2008, if my memory serves me right. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we come to the ultra shortcut done shroomless. Only this run does it three for three. Literally, Logan the Mad Lad himself, he improves the record by what? Like, 1.3 seconds or something crazy like that or a little bit more jumps from a one for three world record to a three for three and one foul swoop <clears throat> and honestly like apart from making this three for three his driving is very solid um he gets i think some change not all of them but all in all like he really holds his own with uh really driving fast apart from executing the hardest tech in the run um it's one thing to be making these harder strategies, but um, it's like a giant hole in the run if like the no list driving is not there to support it. So uh, Logan always has that when he plays. So, um, you know, a lot of categories that Logan has, he just has very strong no list driving to back up doing the hard attack in the game, which gives his healthy lead over the pack as well um, as you contend with him. So um, uh, this was one of the biggest, coolest surprises uh, in the past year. One of my favorite runs uh, that's been hit uh, ever in the game. Um, I think this run, I wouldn't be surprised if it stands in the coming year, but I think I might have at least some competition for it. Might see Emil try three for three, and also with Emil, I think Brakeson may try again, because I think Brakeson has expressed interest in the past of eventually circling back to this track in this category and trying to get a three for three. We shall see. But um, yeah, this this track is so irrecognizable now. This really was like one of the hardest things to ever do in RTA uh, when this was first discovered. Like I think in 2010, Mander discovered it. Uh, like the Shroomless strategy with a trick. But um, we shall see. Only time will tell. But definitely one of my favorite runs in the entire game. So awesome stuff, Logan, as always. Awesome. Now, we move on to Parkway. This track also has a story in the past year by none other than uh, Justin again. And so Justin randomly uploads uh, a video that he got the new roll record here beating Luke's previous record. And you know, they do like this corner cut here all good and well uh, after the cannon now. But um, at the end, it's quite a bit different. This is notoriously known as one of the most frustrating tracks for a lot of us to time trial because the shroom is just so convoluted, it's fleeting, it's sentient, it's just really annoying. Check this out. Like, my god. Like, how cool is that? So, um, I'm going to butcher the proper credits. I apologize. I think... It might have been Scorpion that was fiddling around with using cart that like, I think this is apparently like the cart shroom strategy or something. I don't have the full story of myself. I just kind of heard it in dribs and drabs. Um, but then like, I think Justin just applied it. But again, I don't know what came first. So I don't want to butcher the credits here. Apologies. You can type in the comments uh, to let me know. But, um, Regardless, he got a 211.1, I think. And then uh, Logan came out of the woodwork and swiftly got the first 210 here. Then eventually now comes this run where Luke uh, successfully reclaimed the run again. And he adopted a new Shroom strategy and gets a pretty strong 210.6 here. Now, I definitely think longer term, this will see a 209. Um, I think the splits are... 210.3.2 I think for BKS right now or around there um, 
you can still cut that corner in the middle of the track as well which it doesn't save a lot i think at peak it saves maybe like 50 milliseconds but that's still more uh time save to be done and getting full speed out of here is very important as you see here he was only like what 89 kmh out of it um very precise shroom but it, it looks like a, it's a lot of fun to try out so I haven't tried it yet, but I might try it myself in the coming year just for fun. I, I can't contend with this, obviously, but just for my, my, my own fun, you know? But um, I'm rooting for Felix as well to uh, get into the scene here and get the roll record here on this track. He's been trying this track for forever, even before this new strategy. So um, I'm rooting for you, Felix, to see if he can do some damage in the coming year. We shall see. Now, uh, this track here, this track here, this category has remained unimproved for quite a while. Shoutouts to Invincible. This is still standing. I think this might be near his first 1,000 day record. Let me take a gander here. Uh, so a little bit of a ways away. It's at almost 700 days. And um, this is another track that's uh, pretty dormant as far as activity is concerned. Um, there's a lot going on here that I think goes a bit uh, underappreciated. Um, in recent years of like going through the world record history, um, whenever this track comes about, um, there is some pretty good explanation for like more precise, like high clips or low clips off the banner, gain the early hit and going down the cave, the like turnaround, stuff like that. Um, what I'm waiting for truthfully is the task strategy. I think with the zip zip, I'm pretty sure. Um, where it saves a lot of time, a couple of seconds, like it could yield like a 38 or a 37 second time RTA, I believe, but, um, it is very precise and very hard to do, but I think if anyone is tasked for the job, it would definitely be invincible. So we shall see, we shall see. I think this record playing right now is also another record that's been underappreciated and also kind of like under the radar in the past year. Uh, on top of like everything else that's happened the past year. Um, uh, Luke was finally dethroned on GC Mary Circuit uh, by Logan. And it was a humongous improvement. It was like almost 250 milliseconds. Actually, yeah, 251 milliseconds, I think, because this is 132.72 and Luke had a 513, I'm pretty sure. And as you guys can see, this finally now adopts the uh, multiple mound trick strategy and that's been known for i think maybe 11 12 years um the earliest adopter trying to do something with it was actually japanese player nagisa um i don't know if he still has his youtube channel anymore but he was doing some laps here back in like i think 2010 2011 with this strategy here um but you know i i formally have the record here um in case you guys some of you guys may not know i never try to personally uh, which is very hard to implement. I think some others may have tried in the past as well, but it's just very pre uh, precise and hard to do. But uh, Logan has been the man with the plan always and trying to push the bounds and trying to uh, push the game's limits. And he beats this Piranha here. Very big milestone because that's been a, a new pace lock with going this fast now on the track. Um, gets a single trick here at the very end, but still a very, very... Wait, no. Oh, I guess a single trick was his... Um, I'm not going to spoil it yet, uh, but at least still for this track, if Logan doesn't play, this might stand in the coming year. I think if Luke tries to learn the mounds and if Big Bork were to try and play the track again, both of them can definitely try to contend. Um, I think 129 will be a realistic possibility now in the coming future with this, uh, using this newer strategy now. Uh, we shall see. You might be thinking, why are we seeing this track twice well this is another new three lap glitch world record that's been done rta by none other than logan again this was done less than a month ago and uh this was also discovered by justin i think a year year and a half ish around there i want to say and um is very precise and unfortunately it doesn't gain a lot of time but still it is faster um a three for three can yield like what uh like a low 127 because <clears throat> i think this saves a healthy one second over doing the normal shroom cut um so 
logic would suspect if the current no glitch world record is a 130.2, chop off one second per lap, you get a low 127. But um, this current run, it barely manages to beat the, um, the RTA record, but still beats it nonetheless. I feel like it's another tale of uh, of when GC and Waluigi Stadium was uh, first glitched humanly, where it barely beat the no glitch record. Um, but uh, yeah, this has been only landed by, I think, Logan and Justin. Uh, I think uh, Justin has tried doing this for a three lap. He has landed a couple of times. Um, I'm gonna, probably going to put it up on the screen in this video. I corrected Logan's run at the end in Dolphin for my own curiosity, just giving it a good ending with like a good double trick. And it would have been a 129. So if uh, if the uh, if that was there, um, definitely could have been the first 129. But still cool that it still beats the um, no list regardless. Um, if Logan doesn't try again, I don't think anyone is really bothering to try that. So it might stand for the rest of this year. We shall see. Fellas, it's a lightning cup. I've been talking for almost two hours straight. Uh, hoping you guys have enjoyed this as you have enjoyed the past couple of years of me doing this. Uh, appreciate you guys being here. This whole like podcast style, just laid back reacting type of video. I enjoy doing these. Hope you guys enjoy watching them too. Luke was finally dethroned this year on the circuit. And uh, it was done on a controller you would not expect. Vincent, the legend, the goldmine goat, he gets the world record on MC3 with the GCN controller. He's defied the odds. Like, doing the triple MT is so freaking hard. It's like pretty much the easiest to do with the nunchuck. Um, I mean, I say easy with the nunchuck, but it's still very hard to do. Um, and Vincent defies the odds, and he improves it a couple of times. And uh, Luke eventually answers back with this very strong run here. Um, uh, this was Luke's first track he ever had a Mary Kerr Wii world record on. And um, it's cool to see that he's able to answer back and reclaim his first world record track. Um, I think the battle here that happened last year shows that there's still more to be done despite how optimized it already is. Uh, I think 117.7 will happen in the future. Um, I know Vincent has some issues with like, with like some muscle memory issues with like uh, letting go of like the A button or like the R button or something. Um, hopefully his muscle memory becomes better in the coming months and years and hopefully he can contend again. Casey almost got it too in the past year as well. So more exciting stuff for MC3 in the future, uh, I would suspect. This happened very recently. This was not ever on my Mario Kart Wii time trial bingo card for any year. You're watching this correctly here, fellas. This track is no longer with the spear. It's with the flame runner with a ton of new strategies. This is one of the most unique and really cool tracks to watch because flame runner manual, spear auto and spear manual all three different uh, drift type and uh, vehicle combos now are almost exactly even for RTA gameplay. The bottleneck for Spear Auto has unfortunately been the chain chomp cycle on lap three. I think this is where we see the era of Spear be shelved in Peach Garden history until a new strategy is possibly discovered. I always preface that. I did that with Wario's Goldmine last year. I'm always very smart about doing that. Um, but uh, again, I don't know the exact details of who discovered all these strategies, but there is a main turbo list slip that happens in the hedge that just helps with better navigating quickly through the hedge maze. Um, and also the really cool like spin drift maneuver on the uh, flower bed as well that saves you know, that maneuver saves some time, but it saves more on the following MTs for having a much tighter and favorable alignment to soft drift the S bend a lot better. Um, and so shout out to Casey for taking the torch here. Um, again, uh, I, I don't know the proper people who discovered these strategies, so I can't give proper credit. You can put them in the description, uh, description in the comments if you want. Um, but regardless, the era of the Spear Auto and Spear Manual, I think has come to a close 
because I think in the coming year, this will probably be like a 158 point high seven at least, or a low point eight. Um, Vincent's making a lot of improvements here as well. Speaking of Vincent from MC3, I think Casey is nowhere near done here yet as well. Um, Luke has been trying this as well too. So I think there's more to come here, but um, this is definitely one of the coolest tracks to watch in the entire game. And I did not expect this change at all on Peach Garden. So congrats, Casey. And we'll sh we shall see what the future holds from here on out on the gardens. We head now to the mountain where both categories on the mountain were unimproved. Both still held by Logan. And honestly, both runs are very strong for their own reasons. Um, on the no glitch side of things, um, this does the, um, the very fast MT cut. I want to say either two for three or three for three. Um, I'm actually going to refresh my memory and watch this with you guys right now. So uh, let's watch. I think he doesn't do it on one lap. I may have been lap one. He doesn't do it on. Let's see. Yeah. So I think he does that on laps two and three. Now, the MT cut, as you guys will come to see, you're releasing your MT really early and getting all that boost and you barely clip on the ledge to get really low air time and to barely drift around the, um, the fence when you land. Um, it's really freaking fast, but very hard to do. It saves, I think, half a second per lap. It's, a, it's an insane time save. Um, and so uh, Logan got the first 204 uh, by a good amount. I think this is 775, I think it is. And... Um, you know, he, he's been very dominant on this track for many, many years now. Um, he first had his um, coming onto the world record scene on the glitch side of things on this track. Eventually got the knowledge category. Um, and so I think Logan may finally have some competition this year. I believe a Japanese player, Amphis, has been getting pretty close now. He's been getting some pretty impressive splits. I think he's been trying to adopt the um, mini turbo uh, shortcut strategy now. Uh, shout out to Z Cube as well. He's always been very capable here. I think if he pulls a run together, he can also contend uh, with Logan too. Um, I think those two have been the most uh, recently active players on the track. Um, but it just requires this insane maneuver. Um, yeah, so this is one for three. Wow, I forgot how th this this run is even more impressive watching it back now again. Because he only guessed that strategy one for three. And so theoretically, this track, there's no reason why it can't eventually be a 203 um, when you do that very hard MT strategy three for three. So um, again, I wouldn't be surprised if this still stands um, unless Logan feels like playing it again. But I think Amphis recently has been getting some pretty good splits. And again, I think uh, ZQ, uh, rooting for you, man, I think he could also do some damage here if you get a run together. Uh, and now uh, Logan still holds the uh, good side as well. Um, actually kind of curious i'm pretty sure logan has never been dethroned on this category since getting it let's see i think so uh uh yeah he uh he beat fox back in 2018 and he has never lost this category yet so this uh this category is quite strong uh from what i can remember when he set this run uh a while ago now yeah it was november 2021 um, he mentioned that he does put a 157 at some point, that it can go down a little bit lower still. And when he set this run a couple years ago, uh, his lead was pretty massive. Um, however, in recent years, uh, people have finally gotten like a little bit closer to Logan's time now. Um, and the closest person I believe is Darren. And I think he has, what, a 158.8? five or 0.4 even i think um and so I, I don't know if darren really plays the game at all anymore um but you know if, if he does uh i don't see why he couldn't contend with logan here if he gets a very good run um so yeah i think you know again if logan decides to play this category he could definitely improve it um but i think this is the year where people are finally within striking distance to uh get some healthy competition uh, the Logan here, uh, whether they uh, dethrone Logan or they just provoke him to play it to improve it. Um, I think we might see an improvement on both categories here in the coming year. Um, man, I, I think I predicted like 
most categories that have an improvement apart from a couple. Um, it, 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 the, the state of the game is just still, it's so great still at this point, almost 15 years later. Uh, can't believe this game will be 15 years old uh, come next month in April 2023. But this game being released in uh, April 2008. Absolutely crazy. I don't know how much that time has passed, but we're still here for it. And we still love this game, so it's great stuff. Um, but yeah, we shall see. Yeah, again, he has a 0.5. So, um, you know, we'll see what the future holds on this track. But um, guys, we get to the last track in the game. Two more categories. No glitch. Uh, Luke had an improvement in the past year. He breaks the 230.5 barrier. Um, Luke's records here has been some of the most impressive uh, in a very uh, in a very long time, and and the entire uh, an entire game, in my opinion. Um, he's had a, a vice grip on this track for a very long time, um, and no one has really given him uh, much competition. Um, you know, I've had the record here before in the past. And um, I've randomly gotten back to second worldwide once in a while, but um, literally I've been like over a uh, half second away uh, to Luke. And um, you know, in recent years, finally, some more people have finally gotten a 230 in recent in the past year. Casey and also Japanese player Zeke. And so they have an 870 and an 880. So now it's no longer half a second of a lead. Uh, they're quite close to Luke now. Um, and I think both can definitely give uh, Luke uh, a run for his money here. Um, I definitely feel like this will be improved in the coming year. And I, if I were to bet on anything, I think Zeke might uh, beat Luke here. Um, he tied Luke for the BKS lap one the past year. And his driving is insane here along with Luke's. So I think both of them are pretty much on like the same level. Um, I think just Zeke just needs more time to apply himself on the racetrack. And then Luke can just get like a 230.3 whenever he wants, you know? Um, I think in the past year, Luke had one of the most heartbreaking uh, best known pace fails I've ever seen. Um, he had what would have been, it was Crepton and Dolphin, it was a 230.3. Um, and a crash on the spiral lap three. So, um, I think Z can give some competition to Luke, and I think Casey can as well. I think if Vincent were to come back to this track, he could really do a lot of damage here. Um, but uh, we shall see. Um, apart from that, what's really interesting is that Luke did a human theory task of his own on this track, and he got a 229.9, and nothing really crazy that's implemented. I've always thought, like, at 229 RTA, is the fire pillar lap 2 a problem, and are the thwomps lap 3 a problem? And the answer to both are no. Actually, like, the the hitbox for the pillar is very forgiving, and so that's not a problem on lap 2. And lap 3, in the sliding thwomp room, he still goes to the left of the, the last one sliding in the back over there. But yeah, we shall see. Um... I think a lot of people can definitely still get a 230, all of us can, but to push more than that is just very hard, but um, I'm really convinced that we are going to see, um, you know, we're going to see some competition here in the coming year on the castle, the big bad castle. If you may here, I appreciate you guys watching. This is almost a two hour video. Uh, I really enjoy doing this every single year. And uh, we're finally here on the glitch category of RBC. Uh, of course, held still by Logan, a 220.5. And the only thing notable in this category is in the past year, uh, finally a second player has hit this glitch. I believe it was. I'm going to type right here. The boards. I think it was Core. Let's see. Uh, yeah. Core got a 225.8. So, uh,. This was hit what? December 2020, right? Let's check. Yeah. Ah, oh, good memory, actually. So, uh, yeah, this is irrefutably one of the hardest glitches to hit in the entire game. And only two have hit it uh, in the past, like, two and a half years. So, uh, go figure, right? But, um, yeah. 
I definitely don't think this will be improved in the coming year. I don't see why Logan would bother to do this uh, again. And I don't know anyone else that's really trying. Uh, and as I mentioned before, um, it's not about just making a very hard glitch or shortcut anymore. Like having really strong no glitch driving to back up the glitch and shortcut driving, uh, it means a lot. Um, and so even if people were to make it still, it's going to be very hard to beat Logan's run here. They would have to match his pretty strong spear driving because using the spear on this track is very convoluted and it's very jank. You know, you can watch it here, right? Um, and so I think it would take a player that's comparable competency for the driving of that laps two and three, and then just doing a faster overall glitch setup. That's where the other uh, time save will certainly come from. But uh, guys, with that in mind, appreciate you guys watching, hanging with me for about two hours here. Um, again, a bit later than usual. Just, you know, I've been dealing with some things in the past couple of months, but we're here and uh, slowly getting ourselves back into the swing of things here. So uh, I think this is going to be like a nice first uh, time trial-esque video back in uh, many months now. So uh, I'm here for it. Uh, I still enjoy watching the activity here. And uh, let's have a good coming year for the scene. Um, a lot of new players are still trying to pave their way up the ranks and some uh, legacy players still doing their thing. So uh, guys, thank you as always. I really appreciate it. Take care of yourselves and have a great year of Mario Kart.